As individuals, we are unique. We have our own thoughts, looks, ideals, hates, tastes. No two people will ever be the same. This makes the idea of portrait photography an interesting one. Renike Dijkstra said that everybody has that thing where they need to look one way, but they come out looking another. As she works exclusively with portraits, Dijkstra's work is a good place to start. Now these days, I think it's so difficult to make a portrait of people. I mean, if you look at Aucassandre, for instance, in the beginning of the 20th century, the people were not so used to cameras. Well, I can't say it, I was not there, but if you look at his photos, it looks much more if the people are much more at ease and don't know exactly what is um, what a camera can do, you know, that it can uh, show things which you maybe don't want to show. It's not that I want to uh, force people or something, that they show something what they don't want to show, but I find it much more interesting to photograph people at a moment that they don't have everything under control. We live in a state now where if you point a camera at someone, they are very aware of what it is and what it can do. Consciously or not, people tend to strike a pose or show themselves in a certain way. Dijkstra isolates most of the people she photographs and uses vulnerable situations to make sure they don't have control over the photo. In her beach series, Dijkstra photographed adolescents on their own. They had no direction and no influence of any kind. You can really see the different attitudes in each subject. Continuing with her theme of vulnerability, she made portraits of soldiers after training and young bullfighters as they came out of the arena. After such physical and mental challenges, they wouldn't consciously compose themselves. If you look back to the creation of the camera, its initial purpose was to mimic paintings. Because it was a lot cheaper, it allowed poorer people to have portraits. For Francis Galton and his theories, photography was a great way to document a person's features. Galton believed that criminals could be identified by the way they looked, and in the 1880s he used composites to document his ideas. This made way for the first police mugshots, and later identity cards which of course have proven who you are by your features. So what is a portrait? Is it to show what someone looks like? Just a physical representation? Or is it something more? When you look at someone's photograph, should you be able to pick out their characteristics? Or is it just a picture? For example, if you look at the work of Thomas Ruff, there's a real lack of identity with the sitters. He uses plain backgrounds and a passport-like framing, asking each person to remain neutral in their expression. Ruff believes that photography can only capture the surface of things, and as a result, he offers no insight into the personality of those he photographs. On the other side is Gillian Waring's series, signs that say what you want them to say, and not signs that say what someone else wants you to say. Waring photographed people on the streets of London, asking them to write something on a piece of card to display in the portrait. The words, often quite revealing, give us an insight into who the person is and brings a deeper meaning to the portrait. By gaining this knowledge, we are able to relate to the person in the photograph. In a subtle way, Dijkstra achieves this in her work. The subject may not openly give you any personal information, but you are still able to relate to their situation. Everyone was once a self-conscious teenager, and the awkward poses in the beach series is something we can all relate to. And I'm sure any mother can appreciate the sense of joy and fear portrayed in the faces of the new Mothers series. Well, um, the idea started um, um, three years before I actually made the photos because a very good friend of mine, she gave birth to her second child and I was there to help her a bit. And um, so, but it was a very tough experience to see her more and more pain. And, you know, at the end, I, I mean, I couldn't even talk with her anymore. And then when the baby was finally there, 
she showed it to me like very proud and but at the same time very confused and um, exhausted but also very happy and um, so yeah that's more or less how I thought well I mean because it was so such an emotion emotional moment that I thought well I would like to see if I could capture such a moment in a picture the other thing was that um, which made me feel um, okay with it uh, was that the first show I had in Amsterdam with these photos um, that uh, the woman, a lot of women came to me and they said, oh, you, you really, you know, it's great that you made these photographs because this is really the way it is, but nobody ever shows it and I can recognize myself in it and, and the men were all like, oh, you, you can't show a woman like that and it was like, it was, it was I mean, it was quite surprising, this, this reaction. If you take the example of a family album, you can feel more for the photographs, not only because you know the people in them, but also because you probably know the person that took them. This relationship between the photographer, the subject and the viewer is an integral part of making a good portrait. Our engagement with a photograph is dependent on our own lives and opinions, mirrored or rejected by the photographer through a photograph. Dijkstra said herself that her work is grounded in capturing the real, and it's these real instances that we can relate to so easily as viewers. You can capture a real sense of identity with a portrait, be it that of the subjects or something as the viewer you see in yourself. I have found that it's this relationship between photographer, subject and viewer that allows this to happen. Of course, if we look at the idea of a self-portrait, this relationship changes completely. After Renike Dijkstra broke her hip, it was this self-portrait that kick-started her work. Taken after doing laps in a pool as part of her recovery, it explores her idea of being vulnerable and unready before the camera. Because Dijkstra herself is the subject, her influence and meaning become much stronger. It is thought that a photographer cannot help but put something of themselves into each picture they take. There can't be a better way of doing this than by physically putting yourself in the picture. For me, what makes a good portrait isn't just a likeness to the subject, or even a sense of who they are contained in it. A good portrait, like any picture, is one that you feel something towards. The photographer achieves this by using themselves or others to capture a situation the viewer can relate to. And with the amount of individual experiences we have, you'd think that would be easy. Almost all my photos, I isolate people, and um, I thought that you know, if you give too much details about these people's personal life, then um, people could not maybe could not um, identify themselves with this situation. And so for me, it was much more about the experience than telling something about these people's lives.